Even though shoppers in general seem to be leaving the compact coupe, sedan, and hatchback market in favor of compact crossovers, Honda is incredibly dedicated to this segment with the all-new Honda Civic. Not only are there three different body styles, but there are five different power levels depending on the Civic you get. You can get your model with either 158 horsepower, 174 horsepower, 180 horsepower, 205 horsepower like the model we're looking at right here, or a whopping 306 if you get the all new Type R. Since this model is the 205 horsepower model, that means that this is the all new Civic SI Coupe. Now, not all power levels are available in all forms. So if you want a traditional two door coupe or a four door sedan, then 205 horsepower is the most you can get at this time. If that sounds a little unusual to you, it has to do with the way the Civic Coupe and the sedan were designed versus the Honda Civic hatchback. All three vehicles are essentially the same Civic. We get very similar interiors, a very similar exterior, etc., and the bones of the vehicle are essentially the same, but the hatchback was designed by Honda's European team, and the coupe and sedan were led by their North American team. In addition to that, the coupe and the sedan are assembled in North America, whereas the Type R and all of the Civic hatchbacks are actually built in England. If you haven't been hearing much about the SI, then don't worry, you're not alone. And I think the reason for that is that at 205 horsepower, this produces about the same kind of power as the last generation SI, but the delta between other more common forms of the Civic and this more high performance model is a little bit smaller than before. Thanks to Honda's brand new 1.5 liter turbocharged engine in the regular coupe, sedan, and hatchback, the difference between those and this Civic Si can be just about 25 horsepower. The other reason you might be hearing a little bit less about the Civic Si is because the all new and totally insane 306 horsepower Type R has been kind of sucking all the air out of the room. Up front, we find essentially the same front end as the regular coupe with a few changes for the SI trim. Instead of a chrome bar, we have a blacked out bar running right across the front. There's an LED light pipe inside these headlamp modules, but the modules themselves are actually halogen. You won't find LED headlamps in the SI. However, you will find them in other trims of the Civic with the 1.5 liter turbocharged engine or in the top end Type R. Below that, we have fog lamps integrated into the bumper. We have a blacked out grill-like section right here, an actual usable section right here for the engine's intercooler, and then a very small opening on the other side. As I said before, the SI comes as either a coupe, which is what we're looking at right here, or as a sedan. The coupe is 177.4 inches long and the sedan is a little bit longer at 182.8. But the wheelbase is identical and that's the distance between the front wheels and the back wheels. That means that the real difference between the sedan and the coupe is right back here. The door comes a little bit further forward for the front door. Of course we get a back door right here and then the entire trunk comes way out here. The longer trunk really is the biggest difference between the coupe and the sedan. In addition to the sexier look of the coupe, you might be thinking to yourself that this is lighter than the sedan, so it's definitely the way to go in terms of overall performance. However, the sedan does incredibly well for itself. Even though it is five inches longer than this, it's only 17 pounds heavier. And because all of that weight comes right back here in the trunk area, it actually has a slightly better weight balance than the coupe does. Because the weight difference between the two is just 17 pounds, acceleration is essentially the same. The coupe does have a slightly lower center of gravity because the roof line drops a little bit back here, but the difference is honestly negligible. However, rear seat accommodations are definitely better in the sedan. The sedan gets two inches more headroom and two inches more legroom versus what we're seeing right here. Out back, we see a variation of the design theme seen on the hatchback and on the sedan. We have tail lamps that have sort of a C shape right here, although it's not quite as exaggerated as some of the other Civics. The light module then extends from the body on over to the other side of the body across the top with this large tail lamp module. This primarily houses the accent lights that you're seeing right here on each side. The center mounted brake light is actually behind the rear window. Taking a closer look at the rear bumper, you can see what's going on with that center exhaust. This is definitely a little bit more demure than the triple exhaust we see in the Type R. It's been a while since we found the same basic engine under the hood of a regular Civic and a Civic Si, but that's what we see going on here. Instead of an all new engine like we find in the Type R, this uses a tweaked version of the 1.5 liter turbocharged engine we find in the regular Civic hatch, coupe, and sedan. Only under this hood, the boost has been dialed up to 20.3 PSI maximum, giving us 205 horsepower and 192 pound-feet of torque. That's about the same horsepower found in the last generation SI with a healthier dose of torque under this hood. 
but the big difference is the way the horsepower and torque are delivered out of this turbocharged engine. Because this redlines at 6,500 RPM, notably lower than previous generations of the SI. And the torque curve is definitely a little different. Instead of delivering maximum power and maximum torque at screaming high revs, this engine produces an awful lot of low end torque. That means that maximum acceleration does not happen if you rev this engine all the way up until it hits the rev limiter. You do have to shift a little bit early. And of course, you have to do all the shifting, because as before, the SI is available only with a six-speed manual transmission. This is a little bit different than the six-speed manual we find in other versions of the Civic, because this one uses a mechanical limited slip differential. Now, we don't find the same fancy front suspension that we find in the Civic Type R, so we still get a little bit of torque steer out of this, depending on what you're doing. According to the EPA, fuel economy comes in at 27 miles per gallon combined, but if you treat it gently, it's pretty easy to get over 30 in this vehicle. Although you don't find power adjustable front seats or adjustable lumbar support of any kind in the SI, I actually found these seats to be more comfortable than the regular Civic Coupe, so I'm going to give these seats 9 out of 10. These are very, very comfortable for the mainstream compact vehicle category. We also have a steering column with a large range of motion. You should keep in mind, of course, that if you're a much larger person than I am, you might find these seats just a little bit too narrow because the bolstering on the seat bottom cushion and on the seat back cushion is quite aggressive. Although unlike some sport seats out there, the bolstering doesn't go too high up, so it really doesn't feel like your shoulders are being pushed back in. Some cars out there, it feels like you're practically trying to hold yourself in order to sit back in the seat. The Civic Coupe is obviously not a terribly large vehicle, but the rear seats are surprisingly accommodating for a compact coupe. Now that said, of course, this is obviously going to be less comfortable than the Honda Civic sedan. And the headroom is a big part of that because my head is touching the rear glass. In the Civic sedan, we get a full two inches more headroom. Like the sedan, the rear bench seat is a three-person bench seat, although you would have to be a pretty small person to actually fit right here in the middle seat because of the reduced headroom that we find in the coupe. Another thing to note is that the shoulder belt is not actually attached to the seat back itself. It's actually attached to the parcel shelf that's behind the rear seats. And that means that you do have to try and pull it off to one side yourself when you put this 60% side down. As I said before, the big difference in overall profile between the sedan and the coupe is behind the rear wheels, and that's why we find a smaller cargo area back here than we find in the sedan. Behind the hatch, we find 11.9 cubic feet of storage space versus 14.7 in the Civic sedan. That obviously reduces our bag score, but this trunk is still quite square, and that means that you can put some 22-inch roller bags in this upright position and still barely close the trunk lid. That makes this definitely more practical than some of the shorter trunks that we see. One thing worth noting is that the rear seat releases are back here in the trunk only. You cannot release those rear seat backs from inside the vehicle. If we lift up the load floor, you'll notice that we don't have a spare tire back here. Instead, we get a tire inflator kit. This funnel is for the capless fuel system, so that if you do need to use a fuel jug in order to fill your car, you can use that. And then this foam divider hides what would have been the spare tire area. You may be able to fit a compact spare tire down there in that tire well. However, it may not clear the brakes on the SI. Since we have filmed the interior of the Civic many times, we're really just going to highlight the differences between the regular sedan and coupe and the SI. The biggest difference, obviously, are these dedicated Civic SI front seats that are aggressively bolstered. We also have SI embroidered right there on the front. Moving down to the seat bottom cushion, you can see the contrasting fabrics, the red stitching, and again, those aggressive bolsters on the seat bottom cushion. The overall design is essentially the same as every other Civic. We have a soft touch injection molded upper section of the dashboard, and that includes this section right here below that carbon fiber effect trim. The SI gets the standard touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration. However, you won't find factory navigation in this particular model. As with the rest of the Civic lineup, we have touch buttons over here on the left side. There really aren't any physical buttons for that infotainment system. We have a climate button down here, which takes us over to the dedicated climate screen for the dual zone climate control system, which is standard. Below the infotainment system, we find a storage cubby where you can very easily put a large smartphone, and you'll actually find the USB inputs for that in a separate storage cubby right there below the center console. We have a six-speed manual transmission, as I said earlier in this model. Reverse is over to the right and then down, which is my preference. Brake hold button here for the auto brake hold system, electric parking brake, and a sport button. This changes the way the engine mapping works, as well as the active suspension system. The instrument cluster is very similar to other Civic models. We have some physical gauges on either side of this large central LCD. 
The readouts in this display are a little bit more similar to the Type R than the other Civics out there. For instance, we have this throttle gauge right here in the center. It shows you what your throttle position is. And of course, a brake PSI graph to show you the pressure of your brake system. There's also a turbo gauge like we find in the other turbo Civics. There's a shift indicator like other Civic models that tells you when to shift as you approach the red line. Of course, I actually think that shifting a little earlier than this gives you a better 0 to 60 time. There's a G meter, a lap timer, and of course, your typical trip computer information. You can also adjust the maintenance settings for the vehicle. There's an infotainment readout, phone readout, and you can switch between miles and kilometers. If we press the sport button, you'll notice this little sport icon right here showing that the suspension has been adjusted. And then we get these red bars illuminating above the LCD. The steering wheel is essentially the same as the rest of the Civic lineup. We have some red stitching right there on the inside since we're in the SI trim, sport grips up top. On the left side of the wheel, we find the buttons for that multifunction instrument cluster, as well as track forward, backward, volume up, down, phone buttons over here, voice command button. On the left side of the wheel, we find the buttons for the cruise control system. This vehicle is not available with Honda Sensing, so we don't find radar adaptive cruise control over here. Out on the road, I found the Civic Si to be a ton of fun, but also, for some reason, just a little bit disappointing. But that requires a lot of explanation, so let's just get the numbers out of the way up front. We ran from 0 to 60 in this manual transmission model in 6.4 seconds. That's about one-tenth of a second faster than the time that we clocked in the Civic Sport hatch, and about two-tenths of a second faster than the last generation Civic Si that we've tested. Now, some publications have said that their testing indicated that this model was actually slower 0 to 60 than the last generation Civic Si, and a lot of that has to do with the way this engine behaves. The last generation Civic Si, and really all the other Civic Si's before it, produced a lot of their power at very high RPMs. And this vehicle actually redlines at 6,500 RPM, notably lower than a lot of those other generations. That's all down to the design of this 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. This produces a massive amount of torque in a very specific RPM range. The torque really starts to come to a boil around 1,800 RPM. It's going full on just about 2,200 RPM. And then it really starts to cut off right around 5,000 RPM. So over about 5,000 RPM, you'll notice that this feels a little bit sluggish compared to previous generations of the Civic Si which are really just starting to get their legs way up there at six or 7,000 RPM. And that means that you have to shift this vehicle much earlier than the previous generation Civic Si in order to get the best zero to 60 acceleration time out of it. I'll let you refer to the comparison chart down there below at the bottom of your screen for relative zero to 60 times, but it is worth noting that this is gonna be just a little bit slower than some of the performance competition. Now that makes a little bit of sense because we of course have the Civic Type R, which is considerably faster than a lot of those other options. In our braking test, we stopped from 60 miles an hour back to zero in a very, very short 105 feet. You can thank the very light curb weight of the Civic overall for that short stopping distance. That stopping distance is notably shorter than the Sport hatch that we recently tested, which did it in about 112 feet. In terms of overall handling ability, I'm going to give this model an A. Handling in all of the Civics is absolutely excellent. And the Civic Si, with the optional sport tire package, which is what we have on this model, incidentally, that's a relatively inexpensive option and one of the very few things you can add to your Civic Si, helps this vehicle handle better than something like a base Jaguar F-Type. In fact, the Civic Si will handle better than a wide variety of rear-wheel drive vehicles. This is definitely better handling than any version of the Mazda MX-5, for instance. The grip is so good in this generation of the Civic Si that on your favorite winding mountain road, it's gonna be pretty easy to get yourself into trouble. Of course, depending on how you look at it, with the large brake package we have and the grippy tires, it might also be a little bit easier to prevent yourself from getting into trouble than with some of the competition that's not gonna grip the road quite as well. Out on rougher roads like this, the Civic Si's firmer suspension versus the other versions of the Civic is noticeable. The adaptive suspension system standard in the Civic Si does help out things, and it's noticeable if I switch to the sport mode where things get even firmer than before. But there are only two modes to this particular suspension, normal and sport. There's not as much variation available in this adaptive suspension as there is in the adaptive suspension that we find in the Type R. And that is a little bit interesting, of course, because the Type R's mission is actually to be more performance oriented than the Si, but it also manages to be a little bit more livable if you put it in its softest mode. In terms of overall ride score, I'm gonna give this model a C. This is more compliant than some of the ultra sporty options we see out there, but it is definitely firmer than the mainstream compact vehicles. 
Back out here on a paved road, the ultra firm suspension is a little bit less of a problem than it was out there on that paved road, but the road imperfections are still very noticeable in this cabin. I of course have the car in the sport mode. If I turn it into the normal mode, then things soften up a little bit, but you can still feel all of the patches going on on this winding road. In terms of cabin noise, this scored a little bit louder than the sport hatchback we recently tested. That probably has to do with the tire package that's on this vehicle. So when it comes to our overall cabin noise score, I'm gonna give this a B minus, just one notch below. Over a week of mixed driving, we have been averaging over 28 miles per gallon, despite driving this vehicle pretty hard over the week. That's a very, very good score for a performance compact vehicle like this. That shouldn't be too surprising, of course, because the regular Civic in all of its forms, hatch, sedan, coupe, etc., are all very efficient with this 1.5 liter turbocharged engine. You could very easily average over 30 miles per gallon if you really treated this vehicle gently and didn't drive it like we've been driving it this week. Returning to what I said at the beginning of the drive section, you might be wondering how I could be a little bit disappointed in the SI based on the scores you see at the top of your screen. I think the real reason for that is just that the Sport hatchback is so good and so much fun, and the Type R is the next level of performance that the Civic SI gets kind of lost in the middle. This is, of course, a little bit faster than the Sport hatch, and this handles a little bit better than the Sport hatch, and the steering is a little bit more engaging than the Sport hatch, and the suspension is a little bit better put together, and we have that limited slip differential up front, of course, which helps reduce torque steer. But with so many different levels of power and so many different sporty options available in the Civic, there's less differentiation between other Civic models and the Civic SI model in this generation. So perhaps disappointment is perhaps the wrong word for the Civic SI, and this really should be more about how impressive the other versions of the Civic truly are. Obviously, this is a different level of performance than we find in the Civic Sport hatchback, or even the regular Civic sedan with the same 1.5 liter turbocharged engine, but this is not twice as much fun. This is perhaps 20% more fun. Of course, if you want twice as much fun, then you can get the Civic Type R, and that gives you 100 more horsepower than we find in the Civic Si. It is definitely a fast Civic, and the delta between this and the Type R is more similar to the delta that we used to find in terms of overall performance between regular versions of the Civic and the Civic Si. So some of this has to do with sort of the changing position of the Civic Si. This is still an awful lot of fun. It's still about the same kind of horsepower we found out of the old Civic Si, but now we have that halo car in the Type R. Logically, that shouldn't detract from the fun that is the Civic Si. Again, this outhandles a wide variety of luxury performance rear wheel drive vehicles, and this is a front wheel drive Honda Civic. This handles incredibly well. The steering is just about as engaging as some of the best front wheel drive vehicles out there, like the Audi A3 or the Mercedes Benz CLA, and it's just an awful lot of fun to drive. So in a way, it's all about perspective. Be sure and let me know what you think about that down there in the comments section below. Pricing on the SI is pretty easy to understand. There's just one price. $23,900 buys you an SI in either the coupe or the sedan format. There are really no options. All you can add to your SI is a $200 summer tire package. That's definitely something that I would get. It's a pretty good deal for summer tires and it also helps improve the handling ability. This is a good time to mention that a lot of people, especially people in California, incorrectly think that summer tires are not good for handling in wet weather. That's not the case, because remember, in other parts of the world and in other parts of the country, it actually rains in the summer. So as long as temperatures don't drop down to freezing in your area of the country very often, summer tires are definitely going to be the way to go for improved handling. That nearly $24,000 price tag gets you the four-cylinder turbocharged engine producing 205 horsepower, the six-speed manual, the limited slip differential, active suspension system. We get seats that are unique to the SI, wider tires, and larger wheels than we find in most of the other Civics. On this chart, I've also put the Civic Type R so you can see how the features align one performance model to the other. Now let's move on to the key takeaways. It's worth noting that there is no Honda Sensing available in the Civic SI at this time. Now Honda does have a Honda Sensing package available with a manual transmission in certain vehicles in Europe and of course now with the all new Honda Fit in America, but at the moment you can't do that with the Civic SI. It's worth noting that handling is extremely good in the SI. Again, there are some rear wheel drive luxury performance vehicles that are gonna be slower around a track than this Honda Civic. 
Although I know this sounds like sacrilege, I think that not offering an automatic transmission is a bit of a pity in the Civic Si, because it would make it a little bit more livable for some people and it would broaden the audience out a bit. Now I'm not talking about Honda's CVT that we find in the other Civic models. I actually think that Honda should mate this engine to their 8-speed dual-clutch transmission that we find in the Acura ILX. That is an absolutely excellent automatic transmission and it would then compete very directly with the automatic transmissions we find under the hood of the Volkswagen GLI as well as the Elantra Sport. And that brings us right along to the competition. Let's first talk about the GTI or GLI first. The important thing to remember, of course, is that the Civic Si comes only as a coupe or a sedan, and therefore it's not really a GTI competitor. It actually is the more direct competitor to the Jetta GLI. Although still a performance model, the GLI is not quite as hardcore as the GTI, and that does make a difference when comparing these vehicles. Power in the Volkswagen is quite comparable to the SI. We get 210 horsepower in the Volkswagen, 205 in the Honda. Both vehicles use a standard six-speed manual transmission, but in the Volkswagen, you can get Volkswagen's excellent dual-clutch automatic. For most drivers, the automatic transmission is going to get you from zero to 60 faster, and that's because there is no human factor in the shifting and the clutch operation. That's just gonna get you zero to 60 repeatedly faster than the manual transmission. Of course, on the Honda Civic Si, you only get the manual transmission, and that's because Honda seems to be really dedicated to the purity of the manual. Honda has also priced the Si extremely aggressively, because the GLI is going to be more expensive at 28715 starting. Although we do find a few features overall in the GLI that we don't find in the Civic Si, feature content is actually very good in the Honda, and the difference is still going to be several thousand dollars even if you factor in that extra equipment. For me, the big thing is the driver engagement factor. The GLI handles well, but it just doesn't feel as engaging as the Civic does. The Volkswagen GTI is a slightly different beast. Obviously, it's very different because it's either a two-door or a four-door hatchback, not a coupe or a sedan, but I suppose you could compare it to the Civic Si. It doesn't necessarily compare exactly to the Civic Type R, although top versions of the GTI will be just about as expensive in terms of overall MSRP. Now, personally, I think the GTI is a little bit more engaging than the Si, and you get a little bit more horsepower in most versions, up to 220. You also find more feature content in certain versions of the GTI, and that's because there are more trims available and you can add more options to your GTI than you can with the Civic. But those options are definitely gonna cost you more because especially top end trims of the GTI, by the time you add things like the digital adaptive suspension system, like we find in the SI standard, you're definitely gonna be paying a lot more for that Volkswagen than the Honda. Now let's move on to a less expensive option, the Hyundai Elantra Sport. To create the Elantra Sport, Hyundai basically took their 1.6 liter turbocharged 201 horsepower engine, they jammed it under the hood of the Elantra, and then they did some minor tweaks to the car overall. The important thing to remember is that the tweaks that Hyundai made to make the Elantra Sport out of the Elantra are not quite as extensive as the tweaks that Honda did to make a Honda Civic or a Honda Civic EX into the Civic Si. Now that said, the Elantra Sport will get you from 0 to 60 just about as fast if you get the manual transmission, and actually faster if you get the optional 7-speed dual-clutch transmission. The Elantra Sport is not as engaging to drive as the SI. It's not going to handle as well, it's not going to feel as good out on the road, but it is going to be a little bit less expensive. The Elantra starts at $21,800, and depending on how you configure it, you could get it up to right about the same as a top-end SI model. However, you should know that some dealers are adding additional markups to the SI, you should keep an eye on that in your local area. If you do have to pay an additional dealer markup, then that's going to make the SI notably more expensive than the Elantra Sport. The Elantra Sport may not be as engaging as the SI, but comparably priced, you're going to find more equipment in the Hyundai. In addition to the long standard warranty, we also get factory navigation, HID headlamps, a larger infotainment display, and leather upholstery. Again, the key thing to remember is that it's just not going to be quite as sporty. And now we must tackle the most direct and perhaps the trickiest competition. Other Honda Civics that are sitting right on the same dealer lot as the SI that you're looking at. First up, we have the Honda Civic Sport. The Civic Sport is almost as fast 0 to 60 as the SI. It stops almost as short and it costs $2,500 less. Now you get less equipment because as Honda points out, it's not a dedicated performance model like the Civic SI is. To that end, we get slightly less power. We don't have an adaptive suspension system. We don't have the limited slip differential. A few other things that we do find in the SI. However, handling is shockingly close to the SI. The Civic Sport is just an awful lot of fun. 
And this is exactly why I said that I was a little bit disappointed in the SI. Once upon a time, there were two Civics in America. One was an inexpensive and practical car that was relatively fun to drive, and the other one was 40% faster, had an engine that screamed like a banshee, and was an awful lot of fun. The delta between the two was pretty clear. But now we have a pie that's practically cut into slivers. You have your very practical Honda, available with 158 horsepower or 174 horsepower. Then we have a 180 horsepower Sport model, and then a 205 horsepower Civic Si. That means that there is notably less daylight between the Sport and the regular versions of the Civic and the Si, especially in terms of acceleration. And a lot of people tend to focus on acceleration. So instead of a Civic Si that is 40% faster than any other Honda Civic, we have an Si that is one to two tenths of a second faster than other forms of the Honda Civic without the Si badge. Now the SI still handles better than the Honda Civic Sport, but the daylight here has also shrunk. So instead of the Civic SI handling 40% better than a regular Honda Civic, it handles maybe 15 to 20% better than a Honda Civic. So if on a scale of 1 to 10, the old Honda Civic was a 5 and the old Honda Civic SI was a 9, the new Honda Civic with its turbocharged engine ends up around 8 or perhaps 9, and the new SI is a 9.5. But there's another problem, and that's the Honda Civic Type R, because on a scale of 1 to 10, the Type R really is off the scale. It's probably the 11 in this segment. And that sort of means while the Civic Sport hatchback is punching up at the SI, the Type R is in a way punching down at the SI as well. For SI fans that are used to thinking of the SI as the insane Honda Civic, the Type R really has taken the crown, because this model is 50% more powerful than the next closest Civic, and that would be the SI. And of course the Type R gets all of Honda's latest doodads. If you want navigation, you want a more aggressive sport seats, Brembo brakes, it gets grippier tires, a unique front suspension, everything about the Type R is to give you the maximum performance for actually a relatively reasonable price tag, if of course you can get a dealer to sell you for the MSRP. The result is of course that a 205 horsepower mainstream car seems a little bit unremarkable. Now again, it's not that the SI is a bad car, because I really like it. It's also a good deal, and I would buy the SI before I bought a GTI or a GLI or the Elantra Sport. But for me, it would end up being a less emotional decision, because the rational side of me would start saying, well, how about the Civic Sport, and then modifying it with the two to $3,000 that you would save versus the SI. Or the emotional side of me would say, well, you know, the Civic Si is cheaper than a Type R, but I'm sure if I saved for a little bit longer, or if I stretched myself, and I could wait a year or so for Type R prices to start coming down closer to MSRP, then I should just get the Type R, and that's the Civic that I really want. Perhaps this is a case of Civic shoppers being spoiled for choice, but if I were shopping in this segment, I would probably either get the Honda Civic Sport Touring, because you could get the power and the continuously variable transmission for more reliable 0-60 to 60 runs, and of course a slightly more practical daily driver experience, or I would just save up and get the Honda Civic Type R. I would skip the GTI, I would skip the GLI, I would skip the Elantra Sport, stick with the Honda Civic, but not necessarily the Civic Si. Let me know what you think about that down there in the comment section below. Be sure and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. You can find us over at facebook.com, and of course, if you want to support this channel, head over to patreon.com and find us over there as well. I'll see you next week.